Hello and welcome to part four of Hope, the deviant art story that I read in the voice of Ian McKellen. What? No, really, this is part four and you should probably go back to one or two or three if you haven't seen it, otherwise it'll make even less sense. So let's go, Frodo. The sleep time wasn't good. I started to sweat and I felt something very wet on my trousers. I woke up to see that I peed on me. I felt really embarrassed and I looked for a towel or something to clean the pee-pee. I went to the door of the cell and dropped by the stairs. Then I arrived at the central room of the jail with the new arrivals. All of them had dirty pants and scared faces. There wasn't any policeman or prisoner around and a creepy silence surrounded us. The big guy that I found outside approached me and said, Hey! Do you know something about this shit? No, looks like a joke or something. I don't like this. He smiled, worried. My name is Bull. Bull? Is that your real name? I said, laughing. Yes. I don't know why my dad had a strange sense of humor. He laughed. What is yours? Sarah. He was a big, muscly guy with black hair and blue eyes, with a friendly and fat face. Why are you here? I asked. I robbed some oxygen and they discovered me. I was useless. I killed a man. He paled and stopped to look at me. After a while, a siren rang and something hit my hair, a water drop. I washed the roof and then it started to rain. Someone started the fire alarm. All the prisoners started to scream and curse to someone or something and then someone fell on the floor. It was a woman. All the prisoners scream and then the lights started to flash, scaring everyone. We tried to run away, but where the artificial rain didn't arrive, a circle of fire started. I hugged Bull and washed the roof. It became all dark for some minutes and someone screamed, Welcome all you shits! Welcome to the earth! Then a lot of laughs dispersed in the room. All the other prisoners came out, the rain stopped as the fire. I approached the corpse, realizing that was a inflatable doll. Ha 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 ha! Very funny, I said with sarcasm. A policewoman approached me and answered, Don't take it personally. I just some kind of initiation. Just for fun. Then she smiled and gave me a towel. After that, I agreed to bull, and I went to my cell with the towel on my head. Inside the cell, four women were waiting for me. Hi, sweetie. How are you today? One of them said. I realized that those were my cellmates. In the room, there was a smiling kid that I met before, an Afro-American girl, and a girl who looked like a bit anorexic. The second had short, curly brown hair, the jail uniform, a scar under her mouth, golden earrings and nails painted of black. She was fat and had a serious and interrogative face. The last had tanned skin, long black hair tied in a braid, a piercing on her nose, a tattoo on her left arm. She wore the jail uniform, only torn and consumed. She approached and hugged me. Welcome, sister, she said with a smile. Hi, I answered shy. We're so happy to have a newcomer here. She kissed me on the cheek. Hey, Sophia, cut it off. You're going to strangle her, the Afro-American girl shouted. My name is Ginger, the little girl said. And them are my sister, Tasha and Sophia. Nice to meet you. My name is Sarah. I sat on the bed and Tasha handed me a bottle of beer. Want some? She asked. No thanks. I'm a bit confused right now. The alcohol could get it worst. That's normal. You fell on the ground by the sky from some meters of high. She took a drink. Your head must be a real mess right now. She looked Sophia. Go and take some ice for her. No, it's okay, really. I smiled. The cold rain was enough. Oh, you mean the initiation? Sophia shouted. What? It's a trick that we do to the newcomers. You will do that to Sweetie, Tasha said to me while she was putting the bottle under the bed. Tasha, can I go downstairs? Scott is waiting for me, Ginger asked to her sister. Sure, go to your boyfriend, Pipsqueak. She smiled and then ran away from us. How old is she? I asked. Ten. She born here, Tasha answered. Is not forbidden? We don't have rules. Here is not like hope, she smiled. The policemen just watch us and don't let us kill each other. So... Why are you here? Sophia asked me while sitting on her bed. I killed a man. Oh, a a psychopath. So good, Tasha said. No, he tried to rape me. I just defending myself. I looked down. But he was the wrong person to deal with. 
Sophia took my hands in a gentle way, and she kneeled down to look me in the eyes. I felt kind of protected in that moment and understood by people like me. Sarah, we are all women here. We know how you feel. She smiled sadly and said, I tried to kill my dad. He always beat me and my sister. I just couldn't do it. And now I'm here. My mother is in heaven and my sister is on hope with that monster. Then she woke up and without saying a word, she went downstairs to the kitchens. Tasha lay down on her bed and looked at me. Incas, you're going to ask, I born here? My family is the one of those who have never seen hope. Wow, where is Sophia gone? To clean something, I guess. That relax her. Now come with me, I'll show you the shit and stuff. She woke up. And then we take the walk. The jail was giant. Lots and lots of dungeons filled with cells and prisoners, all cleaned and full of life. The electricity was created by the sonar panels and, for the night and in case of rain, by the massive generators in the cellar. There were four kitchens, five hospitals, six dungeons of work, three gyms with pool, a big hall, a secretary, a large oven for the corpses, oxygen generators, two schools, a roof made of windows, two laundries, baths for every dungeon of cells, and webcams everywhere. The policemen were happy and several at the same time, peaceful and careful. The prisoners were divided in troubles, kids, elders, depressed, spies, respected, sheep, and worms. The first class were the psychopaths, the massive murders, the ones always chased by the policemen and the violent. The second were actually the kids. The third were the older prisoners. The fourth were the prisoners who tried to commit suicide. The sick, the ones under pills, and the mentally insane for life. The fifth was one of the most hated groups. They were the prisoners allied with the system of hope, made for spy the other prisoners and the policemen. The sixth was the group of the leaders of the various crews of the jail. The seventh was made by all the good prisoners and the normal ones. The last made of pedophiles, perverts, junkies, dealers, and weak. After the tour, we came back in the cells. It wasn't time for dinner yet. I was hungry and tired, but Tasha told me that was better to remain in the cells before the bell of the dinner and not to go early at the canteen, because the cookers were very susceptible about that topic. In the cell we found Sophia on her bed while she was removing her makeup made of brown mud and ash. Tasha sat on the floor and started to read her book, Moby Dick. Ginger came some minutes after with a large smile on her face and a teddy bear in her arms. She told us that Scott gave it to her. I decided to relax myself and remove my makeup too. I approached Sophia, and she gave me a cloth soaked in makeup remover. She only needed the water, because her makeup wasn't a real cosmetic. After one hour, the bell rang. We went downstairs, walking to the canteen. We took our place with the whole Tasha family. There was her mother, father, her only grandma, three uncles, two aunts, four cousins... Ginger, her Labrador named Vodka, and her older brother, Dave. Dave was a thin boy, hairless and with two large, sweet, brown eyes. He smiled to me, and I did the same thing in exchange. The cooker walked through the rows of tables, distributing fried legs of chicken, boiled cabbages, an apple for everyone, and a brownie. We ate happily, and Tasha's family was lovely and nice. They didn't judge no one. Her parents were very accommodative with the newcomers. Her cousins were very little and adorables. Her uncles and aunts were very kind and friendly as her brother, but her grandma... She was creepy as Tasha had something to do before go to sleep, so she came to bed later with Ginger. I lied down on the bed, hearing the noises of the night in the prison, but only one came to my ears clearly. I came out from the cells to watch downstairs, where the noise came from. There was Bull down there, and a man with black hair and a knife in his hand. Listen to me, Nino. I'll ask you that only one more, okay? He shouted loud. Where the hell is my cocaine? P Pedro, I really tried that, okay? But they discovered me, uh, and now I'm here. I don't know where the drug is, but, but please, don't kill me. He said slowly. Pedro hit him in the face, so hard to wound him and make blood fill out from his forehead. After, he grabbed the knife and tried to kill Bull, jumping on him with wrath and craziness. But a second before he could kill Bull, a policewoman shoot him in the leg. He fell on the ground, screaming like a pig at the slaughter. The policewoman brought him in his cell, followed by his screams and angry. A nurse came to help Bull, bringing him in the hospital. Tasha came back and shouted to me, What the fuck has just happened here? I heard screams. Pedro tried to kill Bull. I answered shocked. Who is Bull? Ginger asked. He's a friend of mine. Why did you not defend him? The little girl asked. I... 
I was. Ginger, go to bed. This is out your business, Tasha said in a cold way to her sister. Go to hell t- She answered while entering in the cell. Tasha looked at me and asked, Don't listen to her. Even if you would have tried to save him, you could be already dead. Bull is a friend of mine. Yes, but Pedro is one of the most famous prisoners here for violence and fear. He's in the group of the Troubles and respected. It's a bigger thing than you. She sadly looked at me. About your friend. He's probably going to die young. She entered the cell leaving me alone. In that moment, I started to cry. Bull was one of my first friends there, and I started to understand that I was weak as a rabbit in a cage of snakes. I was in danger. Like Bull. Well, there we have it, folks. Part four. How on earth are our characters going to escape from this one. I don't know. I think there are only six parts overall that have been written, so we're getting near the end now. So what do you think? What are some of your favorite parts? What are some of the highlights? Which part has been your favorite so far? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out some of my other videos and other channel, Jar Media, for more craziness. I'll see you next time. Bye.